Oh, there you are, YouTube. Oh, hold them up. What's in your advent calendar today? What's in there? Maybe it will have a walking horse inside. I hope. Oh, what is it? No. It's a candle. What? Is yours a candle too? Yeah. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Let me see. What do you think it is? And they are in the shape of candles. Put yours there. Oh, it fell. The Christmas movie advent calendar. What do we got? December 12th. Christmas vacation. All right. It's that time. Christmas time is here. Oh, what do you what? Hip hip hooray for Christmas vacation. Okay, so this is pretty wild. As we were watching the movie, we got word, we caught the news, that the composer, Angelo Badalamente, died. Like, but, I mean, what? He's also the person who did the music for Twin Peaks. Uh, fantastic music for Twin Peaks. The difference between the music for Tin, Twin Peaks and Christmas Vacation, very, very different. But, uh, yeah, we got that information as as we were watching the movie. That is very odd, very strange. Uh, incredible coincidence. Uh, but speaking of, I guess I should, like, talk about the score a little bit. The part that I find, or found, I guess, because as soon as that happened, it was very early in the movie when we found out. Uh, my wife was just, like, scrolling uh, on the internet or something that popped up, and she was like, What? We just saw his name in the credits. And, um, but yeah, so the score was on my mind as we were watching. And I think, and like some of it's silly, and it's like, that's so funny that the dude who did Twin Peaks also did this, like, silly stuff. Because when Clark's putting up the lights, you know, it gets a little silly. Uh, but there's the moment with the squirrel. The squirrel scene is so, um, like, like, dread, scary, um, uh, heavy, like all of that, it like makes the squirrel seem so much scarier than it actually is. Like that moment is very powerful, I was realizing. And like chaotic, like everything that's happening with the actors but paired with the score is pretty impressive. But anyway, Christmas Vacation was probably, like in terms of a tradition, like a Christmas movie tradition, I would say this was the first one, eh, probably It's a Wonderful Life. I don't know. This one was strong anyway, uh, over at my dad's house because he loved this movie and he would uh, rent it for Christmas and we would watch it, or you know, days leading up to Christmas. I mean, we'd probably watch it on Christmas Eve a lot of times. Um, now, it's not my most watched Christmas movie because again, like the Home Alone films, I watch those year round. So that's why I say like with tradition, um, it was probably this movie, Christmas Vacation. And you know, my dad uh, grew up or he was a teenager during those early SNL days, which actually was interesting because I would talk about him uh, or ask him like, did you watch a lot of SNL? He's like, I was a teenager, I was out. You know, I wasn't staying home watching SNL, but, you know, there were occasions on Saturday Night Live when he was watching them. And then I think, like, after high school, uh, a little little deeper into after high school, he started to um, watch it, you know, like when he got a job and all that stuff, was at home more, all of that. So, you know, he was watching it then. So he knew all these people, right? He knew all these stars. Um, so, like, growing up watching them. So, not growing up, I don't know, a teenager watching them. So, as they started to continue to make movies, obviously latched onto those and watched them. Um, so, this one, you know, he's a fan of Chevy Chase, so we, uh, we would watch this one. And it's very funny. Like, I feel like it was a great introduction to comedy. I mean, you know, there were things before it, but this one, um, I just felt like, when it comes to like my dad's sense of humor, uh, Chevy Chase stuff was pretty, 
pretty strong. He really, really liked Chevy Chase comedy. I felt like we were watching, you know, The Three Migos. Um, I believe he showed me Fletch. Um, and then, gosh, Funny Farm. Love that. Like, lots of, lots of Chevy Chase stuff when I was a kid. And yeah, my dad just thought he was really funny. And so, yeah, I grew up watching this and I love it, love it to this day. I think it's hilarious. So many iconic moments in it. Like, I don't even know what the most iconic moment of the movie would be. Is it the lights? Like, that part I love so much because it's epic, you know, with the lights. And everyone finally gets to see it. They had that build up, you know, where the lights weren't working. And I just think it's kind of, you know, emotional because Clark, Clark did it. He did that part anyway. I love at the very end when he goes, I did it. That's my favorite part maybe of the whole movie. I don't know. I got lots of favorite parts. The part I laughed at when I was a kid uh, the most was the sledding scene. Just the pew, like that part was hilarious. Uh, obviously everything Cousin Eddie does is so funny, but, and there's good sight gags. Um, yeah, just all around funny movie. Uh, I can't wait to show it to my kids, just as my dad did for me. And it's a, uh, I don't know, it, it's really good. I like it. And I'm, I, I, when I think of it, I think of Christmas tradition. Like, it's not just a Christmas movie, it's like a Christmas tradition style movie because we would watch it gearing up for Christmas with my dad. So it has a different type of nostalgic tie um, because it ha it's more, it has like a, a different specialness to it than many of the other Christmas movies that I, that I watched growing up. Just that, that tradition sense makes it land a little bit differently. Uh, anyway, what do you like about National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? Is it one of your favorites? Is it a tradition? Is it one that you watch year-round? Because I didn't watch it year-round. It's always been a Christmas movie. Uh, I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. And perhaps I'll see you tomorrow for more Pure Hangout.